This is an interesting product. It's the Electron Go Out Mosquito Smaller Night Lamp, and I have featured this before on more than one occasion because it's really quite interesting. It seems to evolve. Either that or it's from different manufacturers and they all have their different take on the circuitry because the circuit boards are always different inside. Uh, one of them exploded. I got that in video and I'll put a link to it down below. It's a little excerpt of video that is quite amazing. I shall read the instructions of this because they are just immaculate chinglish and uh, you can try and work out what they actually mean. It's like Jack and Ori. It's story time. Are you ready? The unit fitting be used for bedroom, drawing room, restaurant in Workleo, Henry Stockman, and it's it a cut need extinguish mosquito de place. At not cover a this go out mosquito utensil lamp, house de environment in single plane usage effective extinguish strength 16 square meters. This go out as save energy mosquito utensil is adornment. Hypnotic quiet, surreal light designer, so must eschew lighting strong lights usage. Usage whether then right direct effect go out mosquito effect. For example, sleep front bedroom, not open lamp, first use go out mosquito utensil. Come up to suddenly turn off all lighting strong light 10 to 20 minute or job study Shiba me mosquito utensil set, free in dark place, all is very effective usage. Suggest 24 hour continuously usage. Try the best. Decrease fluorescent tube de switches time. Prolong fluorescent tube de service life. Be an hand go out mosquito lamp to go out kill strength. Should often clean glue mosquito on metal. Clean time. First cut power supply. Open faceplate. Use soft brush clean. And it helpfully says, attention, if this lamp work and have mosquito, please do not use, please not use hand touch. Uh, very good instructions. Very thorough, I have to say. Uh, it should also be mentioned that even if it's not got mosquitoes, you shouldn't really touch it. To be honest, I don't recommend buying it at all because um, it has... I'm just going to, I'm just going to focus up here. Uh, I'm just going to focus on a nice target like that. It's going to be better. Uh, this unit is, uh, apart from the fact you can actually get your fingers through and touch the connections inside... It has a clip-off cover for cleaning, and it's basically referenced the mains inside, so it's not the sort of thing you want to have where kids can play with it, because it's very alluring to humans as well as animals. The packaging, I think this has improved. It's got a little cover here to stop it bursting through uh, envelopes. On a business trip, nice travel, hotels. Uh, it's basically you're going to travel with it everywhere. Let's plug it in. So you plug it in. And the little blue LEDs, ultraviolet LEDs, light up, and uh, theoretically, if I poke a screwdriver in here, it should go pop and crack. Oh, that's quite poppy. Yeah, that's quite poppy and cracky. Uh, I also noticed that the LEDs are flickering. Uh, not to me so visibly, but definitely in the camera. Okay, right, now we have uh, zapped it. Let's take it to bits and see what the circuitry is like. Has it evolved? Is it the same as before? It didn't go bang. This is good. Notice it does hold a charge. So I shall unscrew the back of this. I'll get these things out of the way. And we shall concentrate on the interesting bit. I shall uh, take the exposure up just a little bit. Oh, way too much. Uh, and I shall zoom in just a little bit so you can capture this. That is, I've taken the exposure way up too far, but that's all right, it's fine. It's better than too dark. Or is it? So, previous circuit boards are usually based on capacitive dropper multipliers, and either capacitive droppers or resist resistive droppers, the LEDs. Uh, I'm going to be cautious here because sometimes they hold a charge. The circuit board is small and usual. It's got less components than normal. Uh, it has much less components. I'll just put that little avalanche out of the way. Tell you what, uh, I can see the usual capacitors. I shall short these out uh, before I become a cropper because uh, multi capacitors. Yeah, they all seem to be dead. Mm -hmm, they are dead, okay. Right, tell you what, I'm going to take a little picture of this. I'm going to reverse engineer it, and then we'll explore the circuitry, and we'll see what makes this tick.
the reverse engineering is done, I shall go over the components in this and then I'll show you the schematic. There is a 1K resistor, that's for the LEDs. There is a 220 nanofarad 400 volt capacitor, that is also for the LEDs. It has its own little discharge resistor, 1 meg ohm, but rated 8th of a watt, which is about third the voltage rating it should be. There are two other capacitors, which are, strangely enough, also 220 nanofarad 400 volts, and then there's two 1N4007 diodes. This is the top layer if you want to try reverse engineering this yourself. And this is the bottom layer. Showing how they're connected, the two lightning bolts represent the electrified grid, LED and LED where the LEDs are connected, and power and power where the power is connected. Okay, I shall show you the schematic. So, let's zoom down on this. We have, I shall use that, pens and it's handy, the LED circuit. The LED circuit has that 220 nanofarad capacitor with its discharge resistor connected between live to the end of the LEDs. The LEDs are in that strange rectifierless uh, parallel series configuration. So when this, uh, when the live is positive with respect to negative, the current will flow through these two, these two LEDs. But also, because they're tied across like this, it will cap the reverse voltage across these LEDs to about 3 volts, which is fine. And then when the polarity changes and the live is negative with respect to neutral, uh, the other side lights, that's what was giving the shimmering effect. It was the half the LEDs are lit at any one time. It's just a very simple way of doing things. And there is this 1K resistor, which is suitably rated, um, to limit the peak current through these LEDs. Um, it's a shame. The only thing wrong with this part of the circuitry is that miserable 1 mega ohm resistor. The next bit of the circuitry is the bit that, while this one will stop getting you a, a zap across the pins when you unplug it, if you open it to clean it, it's going to store a charge unless you've got enough mosquitoes or flies stuck to it to gradually creep the current away. But it's very, very simple. There are two capacitors connected to live, and they are charged alternatively. This one via this diode from neutral is charged positive, and this one is charged negative. And it's about, they'll be charged to peak mains voltage, which is about 330 volts here. Uh, is that right? Let me just double check that. Uh, what is the supply voltage at the moment? I'd guess it's around about 240 volts. 240 volts times 1.41 gives you the peak voltage. Uh, about 300, say 340 volts. That'd be better. It sounds more dramatic. It's bad news to the flies. So 340 volts. 340 volts. And that actually means instead of so that's 680 volts. Wow. Yeah, that's spicy. So these capacitors on each half wave are alternately charged. And all that will happen is if there's no flies, they'll simply charge up to that voltage and they'll stay there. But as soon as a fly goes across it, it will get zapped. And then uh, the these capacitors are probably uh, going to pass a high enough current on each alternate, alternate wave to actually... Uh, burn the, the insect to the point it ceases to be and gets maybe dried out. It'll spark a little bit, but not an awful lot because the arcing distance is probably just under a millimetre, if that. It's, well, maybe just over half a millimetre is the best way to describe that. It's very simple. It's what you'd expect. I do notice that the grid in this isn't terribly well aligned. Maybe that's deliberate. There is the option to slide these grids up and down. These are the grids, incidentally, that if you pull the cover off like this to give it a clean, don't touch them because it will hold a charge, make sure you get a screwdriver and bridge it first just to make sure it's fully discharged. Otherwise, you will get quite a snap off that. But there we go. Oh, I didn't draw the switch in, but it doesn't really matter because it's a non-polarized plug, and that means that the switch is going to break one of the connections, but it's not guaranteed to break the live, as it should in the UK. But there we go. Super simple. It's just a generic product. I don't know how effective these are at catching insects. They could upgrade it. They could have made it uh, better. They could have made these LEDs a bit brighter, I suppose. Although, you know, it's not that bad. Um, but how they always claim these things attract mosquitoes, but then they use blue LEDs or ultraviolet LEDs. And I'm not sure those do attract mosquitoes. I think mosquitoes are attracted by the smell of humans. But anyway, that is the circuitry.
it's an interesting thing. It's gaudy, it's pink, it's kind of split, it's zappy and sparky. I shall provide the link down to that other one that went kaboom uh, down below. And that is it. It's another piece of delightful pink tat from China that carries slight hazards. But in this instance, the circuitry, apart from that one meg ohm resistor in, in there that just not being suitably rated, it's not actually too bad in this unit. 